Okay, so in today's video, it's going to be slightly different. We're going to be talking about something that might not be everybody's cup of tea in truth, but it's something that I personally believe is a very important skill. So for golfers, when I'm trying to get a golfer to make a swing change, I'm often sort of diagnosing what the problem would be, giving them some drills, exercises and feelings that they should be trying to respond to. But equally, what I'm also trying to encourage them to do with some of their practice time is to experiment and to experiment with things like ball flight. So most golfers are potentially too draw biased. So for a rounded golfer, the ball moves too much from right to left, that it becomes a, a block out to the right or an excessive hook. Or more common, most golfers tend to suffer more with a sort of slice, which means that it sort of potentially starts left or straight-ish and then finishes on the other fairway on the right-hand side again for a rounded golfer. So one of the skills that you can do, and it's actually very beneficial, is to just try and learn to hit the opposite type of ball flight. Now, if you're a golfer who can obviously do that, then this might not be as applicable for you. But I think for most golfers, they generally struggle with this. The reason why they struggle is for different reasons. But what we're trying to focus on today is we're just trying to concentrate a little bit on the club face. OK, so you will know through experience and through education. And that's where I think things like YouTube are an absolute blessing because, you know, you'll have a wealth of information out there that should really help you. And it will be no surprise that if you are somebody who slices the ball, you are familiar that you are swinging too much across the ball with an opening face. If you're somebody who's hooking, you're swinging too much this way with a closing face. So therefore, I think by simply trying to exaggerate it would be a helpful video because I think there aren't maybe quite as many videos around that sort of subject area. So let's start off with our potential golfer who is very accustomed to slicing the golf ball first. I think what you're trying to do, if you're somebody who slices, you've got to try and get a bit more of a feeling of some arm rotation. So you're going to have to feel like that club face is really closing coming in towards this bottom part of that golf swing. That's just a skill that you've just not got. Now, there's a big difference between rolling and flipping. OK, so can you see I'll do it slowly. That's flipping. That's not good. Rolling. That's what we're after, because we're trying to get the feeling of the toe closing on the back of the ball. So the feeling that you'd have to try and counteract this slice would be you could almost set up. Why not set up slightly towards the toe? I'm saying this is a fun practice session, something to experiment with. You could set the ball slightly out of the toe. And then what you can try to do is as you make it like a little rehearsal swing is you're trying to get the feeling that the toe is trying to hit the outer part of the golf ball. That would be the first thing. If you can get that feeling of that toe hitting the outer part of the golf ball, then that would be a really good skill. And if it goes around hooking around to the lead, it generally doesn't matter in this practice session. You're just trying to play around with feelings. If you did manage to, you're somebody who sliced it forever and you managed to hook one around that way, then obviously then you can just reduce that feeling down slightly. Maybe don't start as much towards the toe. But again, that's why you need to have an element of bravery and experimentation. So that'd be the first thing I would suggest. If you're a slicer, you're trying to get that feeling of the toe hitting that sort of outside part of the golf ball. And you're just trying to increase this sort of forearm rotation as much as you possibly can. For our slicer, somebody who has a tendency, oh, sorry, for our hooker, somebody who has a tendency to close that club face too much, obviously you don't want to be doing that. So the thing that you want to do is you almost want to feel like you're setting up closer towards the heel of the club. OK, and then as you're hitting it, you want to feel like you're going to be trying to turn your body through the golf ball and try and almost expose the heel. So you're going to feel like you're going to leave that club face really open and hit it more towards the heel of the club because you're somebody who's swinging potentially too much this way. So we need to try and get the feeling of rotating and hitting the ball a little bit more towards the heel. Now, again, like I said, these are feelings because I think golfers are very aware of in to out, out to in closed, open face, and potentially more aware of things like miss hits. What I'm trying to do in this video is not necessarily educate on that. I'm trying to talk about the exaggeration of the feelings. So I know when I've had a golfer who's come for a lesson who is very hook biased, okay, they obviously feel like that club face stays very open in that hitting zone because they're so used to it being volatile in terms of this. I also know for golfers that are slice biased, they're too passive, should we say, with this club face, so they need to increase this arm rotation. So this session is about experimenting with ball flights. And I would strongly suggest if you are a slicer of the golf ball, you learn to draw the golf ball. And if you're a drawer of the golf ball, you learn to fade the golf ball and vice versa. Because I think if you can learn both of those skills, then you're going to be more susceptible to finding somewhere in between both of those and produce a neutral ball flight that suits your eye. So hopefully you find this useful. I know it's a very different type of video. You can let me know what your thoughts are on it, but it's a skill that I think gets neglected 
because too many golfers in practice sessions are always just trying to do the norm. And I think occasionally doing something like this would actually be a really useful skill. See you soon.